an absolute. Hey, yo, mi amigo. Hello, Pablo Inglés, American. Yeah, you. Hi. Sorry, I'm just gonna be real quick right now, and I just gotta vacuum for a couple of minutes. If that's okay. Uh, a couple of minutes. No, that will not do for me. All right, I am working right now on a very important matter. All right. Well, I I just cleaned the room next door, and it's prepped and ready for you to use if you like. Did I say I want the room next door? Did I say I want a couple of minutes? No, I want this room where I currently am right now. All right, not the room next door. Do you see this view? Way more expansive, really. Gets the creative juices flowing, you know? Okay, uh, okay, ma'am. I'll, I'll just leave and I'll come back later. Good. Oof, that is more like it. Honestly, watch your attitude, young man. All right? Sorry, ma'am. It, it won't happen again. Ugh. Some people. Yeah, yeah, babe, I'm, uh, I'm about to head off. Yeah. Yeah, babe, I'm about to head out of work. Yes? Yeah, at 3 p.m. No, I know, the CEO is never here. I can literally do whatever I want. No one pays attention. <laughs> oh, and don't worry, I went ahead and ordered dinner for the whole week again. No, obviously, on the company credit card. Yeah. Oh, it's... Fine. I've been doing it for months. No one has ever noticed. Yes. Yeah, honestly, this place is run by a bunch of... No one has any idea how the sausage gets made. Yeah, well... Hey, man. I still get my paycheck, so I can't really complain. <laughs> yeah, great. Alright. Alright, yeah, see you soon. Alright, bye-bye! Hi there. Hi, how's it going? Hey, uh, you, you can just leave that there. I'll take care of it. No problem. Oh, no, it's my bowl. I used it anyway. Not a big deal. Are you sure? Because I really don't mind. It's my job. No, it's it's fine. I saw you cleaning the windows and, you know, taking out the trash and mopping the floor. I'm sure you have a lot to do. It's, it's also kind of how my parents raised me, you know, picking up after myself. Well, your parents did a great job raising you. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, they did a pretty decent job. Um, I don't think I've seen you around the office. I know mostly everybody here. Yeah, it's my first day here at the office, and, um, my name is Jose. Hi. Jose, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How do you like it so far? You know, just trying to get the hang of things, figure it all out, but, um, how do you like it here? Oh, I love it here. Yeah, I've been here five years. Wow. Started out as an intern, and then once they gave me that job offer, didn't look back. <laughs> so I've been, you know, slowly climbing that corporate ladder, but, uh, I can't imagine working anywhere else. <laughs> That's good to hear. You know, I wish you the best in your career. Thank you, Jose. Nice to meet you, and I'm sure I'll see you around. You take care now. You too. Oh, I am so sorry. I did not realize you were still here. Oh, don't worry about it. I don't get distracted, so you can take out the trash. Oh, uh, okay. And I'm just so surprised that you're still here. I mean, it's already 6.45. Yeah. No, I was kind of just getting into a flow, and... I hate losing the momentum, you know? I stay here pretty late. It's it's not like the hardest thing. I really like my job. I completely understand that. <laughs> Excuse me? I, I'm sorry, I hope it's not too much of a bother, but can I ask you a question? Yeah. What keeps you motivated to stay here so late? I mean, what is your secret? I'd love to know it. <laughs> um... These are my two boys, Michael and Andrew. They're twins. They're about two years old. Everything I do is for them. So, yeah, working too late, it's uh, never really that big of a deal. They are truly beautiful kids. Thanks. Now, they get their looks from their mom. I know I'm not the best looking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, she was an angel. She was the best mother. Truly, I, I don't know what she saw in me, but the years that I spent with her were the best years of my life. She's not here anymore, but, you know, I, I know that she's still watching us from above. 
Wow, I'm so sorry to hear that. I mean, it must be really difficult to raise two kids on your own. Yeah, you know it is, but it's it's also the most rewarding experience of my entire life. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to dump everything on you like that. That was, but uh, Jose, thanks for listening. I, I really appreciate it. And speaking of the time, I only have the babysitter till about eight tonight, so I got to get going. But again, thanks, Jose. Hope you have a good night. Thanks, you too. Dude, what is this meaning about? Don't you read the memos? <laughs> Good one. I never read the morning memos. You know I send those things straight to junk mail. Oh, well, maybe if you had read it, you would know that we're meeting the CEO. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait to see how dumb this guy looks. <laughs> Good morning, David. Becky. Why is the janitor? Hey, janitor. Why are you wearing a suit? My name is Jose Rodrigo. I am the owner or founder of Rodrigo Beverage Company. You're kidding, right? He's he's kidding. He looks like the janitor. Well, you're right, Becky. I was the janitor. But every so often, I like to go undercover and see how business is being conducted in my company. It also lets me get an understanding of how my employees feel about working here without the bias of speaking to the CEO. And yesterday, you made quite the terrible impression. Uh, oh, I mean, oh, I mean, we were having a rough, I was having a rough day. I mean, it wasn't indicative of how I always am. I mean, sorry, we got off on the wrong, but no harm, no foul, right? Not only were you condescending, but you treated me with contempt. And I also overheard you saying how you leave work early, ditch out on work, and inappropriately spend money on the company's card for and that's been for a couple months now. Now that is indeed harm and foul. Look, it is not as bad as you're making it all out to be. I mean second chance, right? You're fired, Becky. Pack your things and go. We didn't want to work at this stupid company anyway, right? Don't implicate me. I have nothing to do. This is all you. Ugh. Now, David, I was very impressed with you yesterday. Thank you, sir. Not only did you treat me with dignity and respect, like a real human being, but I was also very moved by your dedication to your job, to your career, and most importantly, to your beautiful family. In just one day, you showed me how much you care for this company. And I couldn't help but wonder, what can you do in a higher position? What do you mean by that, sir? What I mean is I want to offer you the promotion as executive manager of this branch. Now, it'll come with more responsibility and duties, but I'm sure you're up to the task, right? Wow, uh, that would be incredible. I don't even know what to say. Why don't you say yes? Yes. When do I start? How about now? Hey, Gio. Good morning. How are you doing, Jess? Uh, you know, living the dream. Heh, <laughs> yep. Me too. I heard the Cougars won last night. Yeah, about time. I thought we were never going to make it to the playoffs. <laughs> hey, how's your mom doing? Good, thank you. Feeling better every day. I'm glad to hear that. Have a good day. You too, Jess. Didn't I mention we're trying to keep the dress code more upscale around here? Our clients are going to wonder why it looks like we're not paying you enough. Tim, we've talked about this. No one is requiring me to wear designer clothes. Mrs. Doyle thinks I look very professional, and I answer to her. I understand that's what they're telling you, but let me give you some advice. No one's ever going to think you're promoting you when you shop for clothes exclusively at discount stores. I'm happy to fly under the radar for the moment. I want people to know me for my good work ethic, not my clothes. You think your work ethic is getting you noticed? As long as the phone gets answered and the coffee gets made, you're not even a blip on the radar. Trust me, most people think your name is Jane. I'm sure that's a mistake. Look, I have a lot of work to do, so um, I haven't even prepped the office yet. So if 
you don't need anything from me, why don't you just head back to your desk, okay? Prep the office yet? And you made the coffee? A way to inflate your responsibilities. Also, I didn't just come to chat. I need a copy of these made ASAP. Bye. Can I help you? No, I'm fine. Is there anything else I can help you with? If not, I really need to get back to my work. I doubt that. As you know, I'm well aware of what everyone is up to around here. From the CEO down to the janitor. Yep. Yeah. We're all very impressed by your constant surveillance instead of working at your office. Don't be rude. I can make your life very difficult. You're just another secretary who's going to leave as soon as you get married. You'll never move past where you are here, even if you work here for another decade. Look at this mess! Ours is not to spill the water! It's okay, Gio. Don't worry about it. I can help you clean this up. I think there are some towels in the break room. I'll be right back. Uh, uh, no, no, don't, don't bother. I... You know, I heard upper management is looking to make cuts at all levels. I'd be more careful if I were you about making a good impression. We don't want our clients thinking we're incapable of even hiring a semi-competent janitor. Jess, no, you don't need to help. I, I got this. It's okay, Gio. I'm happy to help. Good as new. Thanks for your help, Jess. It's okay, of course. You've always been so kind to me. I'm happy to return a favor. You know, it's employees like you that keep this company going. Some people think it's all about the flashy office or the nice attire, but it's about dedication and respecting everyone on your team, from the janitor to the CEO. Thank you, Sagely Custodian, but the outfits might help a little. Honestly, Tim, I have to say, I'm not very impressed with you. What? You can't talk to him like that. I'm a VP at this company. Right. And I'm the CEO. Oh my god. You're Edward Miller. It's a pleasure to meet, well, have you here. I, I guess we've met. But what are you doing here, cleaning the office in disguise? Sir, it's a real pleasure. I know sometimes I can be a bit hard on the lower level employees, but it's only because... Every few years, I spend a couple of weeks as, a, as the janitor of a new office, so I can evaluate the workforce. You can learn a lot about how a company operates from how the team members treat one another. You see, exemplary employees like Jess are very hard to find. Wow, thank you, sir. In fact, I want to speak to your supervisor and make sure that you receive an immediate promotion. Someone with your candor and work ethic needs to be in a senior position. I'm honored, Mr. Miller. Clearly, there are others who need to understand the value of respecting both their peers and their subordinates. Sir, I really don't think you got an accurate picture of my contributions. Sorry, Tim, but your employment is terminated. I've played the janitor quite a few times over the years, and I have never seen someone treat anyone as terribly as you've treated Jess today. Please pack your things and be on your way. What? You can't do that? <laughs> Actually, I can. You see, it's my name on the stationery. I hope you take this as a lesson that integrity is worth far more than a fancy attire. Congratulations on your new position. Hello? Excuse me. What do you think you're doing, buddy? Sorry, ma'am. I'll, I'll, I'll get my bags together. I'll be out of here in just a moment. You're sleeping in my parking spot, and because you're in my parking spot, I'm going to be late for my job. 
So would you hurry it along, please? My apologies, ma'am. It rained last night and, and I'm still cold and wet. I'm just trying to clear my head okay, so okay. I can... I really don't care about your sob story. Get out of my parking spot! Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm... Okay. I'm just getting these together. This city is going down the trash hole. Ma'am, is there any way you can spare a dollar so I can get something to eat? Are you seriously asking me for a dollar after you've been in my parking spot and you're making me late? It's just I haven't eaten in two days. I, I don't know. I thought it was worth a shot. Shot? I, I... You know what? Why don't you get a job? Give it a shot. J-O-B. You ever tried that before? Yes, ma'am. Um, I actually had a job up until a few months ago. My mother got sick and I had to quit my job because there was no one else to take care of her, so I had to take care of her, and, okay. and now I lost what my I... job and I lost my mother. So I'm supposed to feel bad for you because your mother died? How do I even know if you're telling me the truth? Even if she were dead, why should I feel bad? I don't know your mom, and I don't know you. I'm sorry, ma'am. I was just trying to explain my situation. Maybe you could go inside of your office and see if there's any leftovers from your company's kitchen. Maybe you can bring them out for me to eat uh, something. So you want me to take food out of the kitchen in my office and bring it out to you? That sounds like a really good idea. You know, first, you're trying to be, make me late for my job, and now you're trying to get me fired? Are you kidding me? Look, I am never gonna be out of a job, and I'm never gonna be homeless. So you're on your own, okay? Goodbye. Yes, ma'am. Oh, good morning, Karen. I hope you had a great weekend. Oh. I don't have time for chat. I am hungry. Did you get that breakfast I asked you to pick up? Right, yes. Um, well, I was going to tell you, actually, that your favorite coffee shop is closed on Mondays. But I did go to Starbucks, and I got you your uh, favorite. Yeah. Uh, you went to Starbucks? You think there's a one in a million chance I'd even eat that junk? Oh, I'm sorry, Karen. I was just trying to get your coffee. Oh, hey, you know what? One more word, and I'm going to have you fired faster than you can say, Starbucks. Got that? Hey, Karen. How's it going? Oh, hey. Honestly, Jim, I've had a really rough morning, and I've got so much work to get done. Can we save the pleasantries till later? Uh, sure. Um, well, just so you know, the CEO is actually here. He's requesting to see you. He's in the conference room waiting, so... Wait, what? Why didn't anyone tell me the CEO was coming by? I, I, I don't know. I don't think anybody knew he was coming. He kind of just popped in. I guess he likes to check in on local branches to see how things are running, so... Well, I hate surprises, but I'll give it my best. Okay, cool. I'll let him know. Okay. Mr. Franklin, I wanted to say what an honor it is to finally... Karen, please, come in and have a seat. Okay. What's going on? Aren't you... Homeless? Oh, I used to be, but I'm not anymore. Okay. But you were just out in my parking spot, sleeping, and you were wearing ratty clothes. Is this some kind of prank or something? Am I going to be on one of those television shows? Unfortunately, you're not. So what is going on? Are you really the CEO? Because if you're not, I have security in this building and I will be calling them unless I start getting some answers. Okay, Karen, just settle down. I'll explain, okay? Five years ago, before I started this company, I had a job that I had to leave to take care of my sick mother. But when she passed away, I became homeless for six months and no one would even look at me. Oh my. But with the help of a local church, I was able to get back on my feet and at the local library, I was able to have access to a computer. And with that computer, I was able to build Franklin Technologies to the company that it is today. Ah, I didn't know that and I don't know what to say. But why were you pretending like you were homeless then? Well, because even though I'm a successful businessman now, I haven't forgotten where I came from. And so I like to go around to the different branches every year to test my managers. Oh, so. You were testing me. That's right, Karen. And unfortunately, you failed. And you know what? It would have been bad enough if you just ignored me. But by berating me and judging me when you thought I was homeless, that's not in line with this company's values. So what? 
What are you gonna do? Unfortunately, Karen, I'm gonna have to fire you. Your behavior is unacceptable for this company. Fire me? You can't do that. I mean, okay, so who are you gonna find to replace me, hmm? Well, I spoke with your assistant, Jill, earlier this morning, and she seems to be more than willing for the job. Jill? You're replacing me with Jill? Oh, good luck with that, buddy. Good luck to you too, Karen. If you could just get your stuff and please leave the premises before I call security, that would be great. Whatever. You know what, this company is going down the toilet anyhow. Karen, a word of advice. In your next job interview, you might want to have a better attitude. Oh, shove it. Yeah, Jill, could you come in the conference room real quick? Thanks. Hi, sir. How could I help you today? Hi, um, I was uh, wondering if I could use the bathroom. Oh, sure. It's right around that corner. Um, do you want something to drink? I mean, it's pretty cold outside. Oh, um, thank you. That's, that's really kind. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any money. It's okay. It's on the house. You know, everyone needs some warmth. Thank you. You know, you actually remind me a lot of my sister. Do you talk often? No. Because of my, uh, choices in life. Well, it's never too late to reconnect. Just remember that. Mm. Thanks. Why'd you let that man in here? He's gonna scare away the customers. Well, he deserves some kindness and he needs to use restroom. Kindness? Kindness doesn't pay the bills, Emily. Maybe when you finally get to a position where you can manage something, you'll be able to make a decision. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much that means to me. Mm, that's enough, sir. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave immediately. Oh, um... All right, I'm sorry if I caused any trouble. Uh, actually, you caused quite a bit of trouble, and now I think it's time that you remove yourself from our establishment. Um, well, honestly, I didn't really have any other options. Uh, there isn't a public restroom for miles and miles, and that's why it meant so much to me that Rachel let me use the bathroom today. Oh, I don't care about the public restrooms? This is not your public bathroom. How dare you have an opinion on my employees and my customers? Like I said, remove yourself from our establishment immediately or I will be calling the police. Look ma'am, I, I didn't tell you how to run your job or run this establishment. I just thought that since Waverly Coffee Shop is so welcoming of people from all walks of life, like they say in their mission statement, that perhaps I'd be able to come in and use the restroom. Well, I'm here to tell you, I don't care about Waverly's mission statement. All I care about is the fumes coming off you, ruining the coffee beans and the customer's experiences. So like I said, for the third time, I'm gonna need you to leave before I call the police to remove you from my establishment. Got it? I'm sorry. Where do you get off? It didn't cost us anything to let him use the restroom. And plus he's right. Okay, well firstly, have you heard of a water bill, honey? And secondly, he's right about what? Well, at Waverly, we're welcome to everyone, including the unhoused. Oh, well your job is not to ever question my decisions. I'm the boss around here, and your job is to grind the coffee beans. So get back to it, or you're fired. Hi, I'm James Harrison. I'm the CEO of Waverly Coffee Shops. Wait a second, aren't we that guy from the street? 
It, it's him. It's, it's really him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was a, a funny little odd prank you played yesterday. Why, why did you do that? While I might be the founder and CEO now, 10 years ago I was on the streets. Yo, seriously? Yes. But because of a kind barista who let me do my work in their cafe, I was able to get my life back on track. I built a tiny, tiny, small coffee stand into a multi-million dollar coffee empire. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Oh my God, I had, I had no idea, I didn't know. And because of my experience, I like to see for myself firsthand how my shops are treating our unhoused fellow citizens. Should have let the manager know. Yesterday, I experienced firsthand how some of our customers are treated. Emily, you showed kindness and respect when it was absolutely necessary. I, I just did what I thought was right. That's what our brand stands for. Respect, kindness, and community. Right, you know, I was just trying to protect our image and our, cl our clients, and uh, we can't just allow anyone in here. It's the very everyone that you speak of that we want in our coffee shops. People from all walks of life. Miss Davis, I'm afraid I have to let you go. I'll change, I promise. I, you know what? What you saw yesterday was actually a, a, um, a new training managerial thing I'm working on with all of the employees and the baristas where we have someone like Emily, the coffee grinder, who has to handle a really mean and demanding manager, which is not how I am here at all, right? And you know, Emily, she passed the flying colors. Company does believe in second chances. However, we also stand firmly by our values. You'll get a severance package, but it's for the best that you go in a different direction. I hope you're able to take something positive from this experience at Waverly Coffee Shops, and maybe even a bit of a lesson. The only thing I'll be able to take from this is how to not make coffee. This coffee place is the most disgusting crap I've ever drank. It doesn't even work. There's no caffeine in it. And you know what? I'm gonna go out and make my own coffee stand and it's gonna blow this one out of the water. Good luck with that. Hey, Emily, how would you feel about a promotion? This place could use a manager with your kind of heart. I would love to. Great, let's ensure every customer feels welcomed and appreciated here. I won't let you down, sir. I know you won't. Are you the guy who's been pressing the button? Uh, yes, ma'am. Th thank you so much for coming. What do you want? I was actually uh, hoping to get an extra bag of peanuts. <laughs> a grown man asking for another snack like a little boy. Excuse me? Listen, buddy. You only get one pack of peanuts per flight. That's it. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. I fly with Unifly Airlines all the time, and I've never had a problem getting an extra bag of peanuts. Uh, I don't think there's any rules against giving extra peanuts. So what are you trying to say? You know the rules of the sky better than me? Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, I'm not saying that. I just think... I need you to stop thinking and do what I tell you to do. And what I'm telling you to do is stop talking, or I'll have the police waiting for you at the gate when Wait, we arrive. Wh what? You, you, you're going to have the police waiting when we arrive because I'm asking you for another bag of peanuts? This is my plane and I make the rules and I do not appreciate you disrespecting me nor what I tolerate it again. Do you understand me? Did the plane run out of peanuts or something? What did I just say? Tell me what did I just say? You said that if I kept talking, you'd have the police waiting for us when we arrived. Uh-huh. And yet you're still doing what? You're still... You're still talking. Do you talk to all the passengers like this? Or is this just kind of a me <laughs> thing? Or... Listen, buddy. You get one more warning. I'm gonna go to the back. I'm gonna sit down. And I'm gonna finish my game of Candy Crush that I've been working on for 45 minutes. But you keep interrupting me. And so help me God if you pull me one more time out of my seat. You got it. Yeah, I got it. That's good. 
Cause silence is golden. Someone's having a bad day. <sighs> What's the problem this time? This time? Uh, this is the first time I've asked for anything. <laughs> well, I can tell by your whole persona, hair, nails, and everything. You're like a Karen, and you're just gonna be annoying. Um, okay, well, my name isn't Karen, and all I was wondering was if I could have a blanket. I just wanna take a little nap. Oh, are you a little tired? You wanna take a little nap? Your eyes a little sleepy? You had a hard day at work? Life is just so difficult for you, isn't it, Karen? Okay, uh, again, my name isn't Karen, and I'm sorry if I offended you. I really wasn't trying to be disrespectful. I'm just... Well, Karen, your whole deal is offending me. And I don't like how you're talking to me like you're my boss. I'm the boss on this plane. You're the boss up here? Yes. When you fly the friendly skies, Lacey is the queen bee. You hear me? Yeah. Sure. Good. <laughs> uh, so, could you get me that blanket? Or <laughs> Does this look like it's a, a, a bed and breakfast? Do I have a badge that say, welcome to Hilton? Now, I don't get paid to just pass around blankets to people just because they cold. I mean, isn't that like exactly your job? <laughs> blankets are for first-class passengers only. Do you understand me? First class. And by the looks of you, you don't have no class. Now, I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. Okay, okay. Um, I guess I'll just get a sweatshirt out of my bag or something. Yeah. Why don't you do that? Why don't you take care of your own problems for a change? Okay. Okay, either that woman is having the worst day of her life or she is just the most terrible flight attendant ever. <sighs> no, 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 no. Where do you think you're going? To the bathroom. This flight is landing in an hour. No bathroom breaks for you. Ma'am, the seatbelt sign isn't even on. Let me ask you something, pal. Okay. Have you heard of an air marshal? Yes, yes I have. And you know air marshals carry handcuffs and also guns on aircrafts? Yeah, I, I do know that, yes. What if I told you there's an air marshal on this aircraft right now? What does this have to do with me going to the bathroom? It has everything to do with you right now. Because if you talk one more time, I'm gonna ask that air marshal to come and handcuff you to the toilet. Do you understand me? Am I getting clear to you now? So you want me to sit down? Yes, sit down immediately. Lacey Franklin, you're fired. How do you know my last name? Are you a stalker or something? I'm far from a stalker. Okay, who are you? My name is John Harris and I'm the CEO of Unifly Airlines. In all my years, I've never seen a flight attendant acts in such a rude and, and frankly, mean-spirited way. But you know how the passengers are. Like, they lose all sense of home training when they're up in the air. Come on, sir, you know what I'm saying. You know, denying people snacks, denying people blankets, denying people bathroom time, that's not how we do things at Unifly, and, and it's frankly against company policy. But, sir. No buts. I wanted to wait until we landed, but you forced my hand. We were gonna have a member of HR meet you at the gate. Good day. <laughs> well, this job was beneath me anyways. Huh. Every great company has a tagline that tells a story. With Nike, it's just do it. With McDonald's, it's I'm loving it. And with Antron, it can be... Oh, hey, Will. How's it going? Yeah, uh, it's been better. Oh, no. What's going on? Instead of working on the pitch for Amatron, I went drinking with my buddies last night, so I have nothing. Lisa's going to be so mad at me. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you don't tell Lisa that you don't have any ideas because you were out drinking last night. 
Well, yeah, duh. So, um, do you have anything? I do, actually. And it's pretty good, so I don't think you have to worry about not having anything. Maybe let me take the lead on this one. Great. Can I hear what you got? Yeah, of course. Amjot, building the world of tomorrow, today. I put together this whole deck. I've got all the print done, most of the print done, um, marketing, and a video. That sounds pretty awesome, honestly. Thank you. I do need some help with copy, so you might be able to hop on this project. Sure, I would love to. Hello, Ashley. Good to see you both. Let's get down to business. As you know, the Amatron execs, and we need to blow them away with our pitch if we want their business. Obviously, Amatron is one of the biggest computer companies in the world, so their business would be a huge deal for our company. So, what have you got? Well, I'd like to give this a shot, um, if that's all right. So, as you mentioned, Amatron is one of the biggest computer companies in the world. And what do people think of when they think of computers? They think of the future. And that's why my pitch is Amatron, building the world of tomorrow today. What do you think? That is really good, Bill. Wow. All right, Ashley, what ideas do you have? It's going to be pretty hard to top that. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I wasn't able to think of anything, Lisa. Really sorry. Ashley, that's not like you. But Bill's idea was really strong on this one, so I think we're going to go with that. You can help him out, assist him with the marketing Bible. Get that done by Friday, please. All right, Bill, you take the lead on this one. I'd like an update by tomorrow, please. Bill, walk with me. I want to talk billboards. Bill, what the heck, dude? Oh, hey, Ashley, what's up? You know what's up, you just stole my idea. Oh, did I? Cause uh, pretty sure it was me who pitched the idea in the meeting. You certainly didn't. You're such a snake, man. Snakes have been around for millions of years. They, uh, they do whatever it takes to survive. So quite frankly, I'll take that as a compliment. You're unbelievable. If you wouldn't mind, would you send some of the stuff that you had in your marketing deck? Look like you had some great ideas in there. You're kidding me, right? Well, you know how much Lisa values being a team player and you know, this might be a good way for you to make up for your lack of preparation earlier at the meeting. I'm just looking out for you. You're the worst. Yeah, I'll send my stuff. Thank you. Bill, Ashley, could I talk to you both? Sure thing, boss. What's up? Well, I just received Ashley's email outlining the marketing strategy for your idea for the pitch. Yeah, it looks good, right? I uh, asked her to help me out. It looks excellent. The only problem is, as I was going through the Google Doc history, I noticed most of the edits were made last night by Ashley. There is no way Ashley could have made all those edits last night when she only heard your idea for the pitch this morning. Ashley, was this pitch your idea? Yes, Lisa, it was. Why didn't you say anything? He just ran with it so quickly. Bill, this is your last warning. If you steal someone's idea, you will be fired. Ashley, take the lead on this from now on. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks a lot. Really? You should be apologizing to me. X, that unlocks the gondola. Here comes the Jurgen. Okay, <laughs> let's go, baby. Let's go, Jurgen. In three, the Jorgen's gonna come out. Two, and then, then okay. But I have my flail and my and my wrap and my wrap and my rhombus. John. I'm gonna. John. Hold on one second, Ashley. Wait one moment. Like John. Our, what? 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 What is so important? What do you mean? What? You told me that you were gonna clean up the place while you were applying to jobs today. That's what you need to interrupt this game with? Are you serious right now? You're unbelievable. I'm unbelievable. What have you been doing? It doesn't look like you've been applying to jobs and I know you haven't been cleaning. For your information, I was applying to jobs all day long. Really good jobs and a lot of them too, okay? And so I took a little break, okay? Cause I just wanted to relax for a second. Okay, well what about this mess? You said you were gonna clean it. And I will. I will clean up this mess at some point. Oh my God, you treat me with such disrespect. Honestly, I don't know why I put up with it. 
Maybe because I pay all the bills. It's already 6 p.m. I mean, I don't mean to be a nag, but I had a really tough day at work and I just want us to come home to a clean place. Look, I'm sorry you had a tough day at work, but that doesn't mean you have the right to barge in here and shriek at me and yell at me. I'm your partner and I deserve some respect. I'm gonna get back into this game. But why don't you get into the kitchen and whip us up something great for dinner? It's Friday night, so make it something good, okay? How does that sound? Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Boop! Okay. John, wake up. John, wake up! John, wake what, up! What, 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 what? What, Ashley, what? What is this? This place is filthy. You said you were gonna clean it up two days ago. This is unbelievable. Are you seriously still on me about this? Right here, I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna do it at some point. Would you just relax and stop sh getting in here and shrieking your head off? Oh my gosh. I was up late last night defending my turf. What does that even mean? I don't think you understand the seriousness here. I, I understand how serious this is. Is it that serious? I'm gonna clean it up at some point. It's not the end of the world, Ashley. It's just a little messy in here. Why don't you lower your voice, okay? Stop shrieking. God, it is so unattractive. <sighs> it's unattractive? I work, I, I cook, and now I have to worry about being unattractive? Yeah. You definitely do. You're in a relationship, okay? So why don't you tone it down, okay? And tighten it up, all right? <sighs> Ashley! Ashley! Where you at, girl? Ashley, I just got done with the interview. Rent really well! Ashley, where are you? Ashley, where are you? Ashley, do... Ashley, what are you doing? I'm leaving you, John. What? Are you serious? Why? You've got to be kidding me. I mean, you don't do anything around here. I do everything to hold this place together. I, I do the cooking, I do the tidying, I work all of the time. It's too much. Look, I... I'm sorry I was in a little bit of a funk recently, but I just had this great job interview and, you know, it's all turning around. I'm happy for you. That sounds great, but it's too late. I made arrangements. I'm going to go stay with Susie. Wow, Ashley. What? I cannot believe you're going to throw all of this away. Everything we've built because I wouldn't clean up. Do you hear how ridiculous that sounds? <laughs> Wow, I honestly, I, I cannot believe you right now. That, that right there. I do so much for us. I've built all of this for us. I've tried so hard to make it work for us. I deserve better. I've tried for so long. I deserve more. <laughs> you think you can do better than me, Ashley? You really think so? <laughs> okay, well, good luck. You know what? I'm willing to take my chances. Goodbye, John. If you walk out that door, Ashley! So Ashley, I overheard the other day, or did you break up with your boyfriend? Yes, and that's a personal issue I'm dealing with. Not one I'm willing to discuss with you. For sure. I mean, now that you're single, um, would you ever want to go and get a drink? With you? Yeah, I mean, we have a good dynamic in the office. I think it could be great outside of the office. What do you say? Bill, you just stole my idea last week. What makes you think I'd want to go out with you? I mean, we all make mistakes. That's why pencils have erasers. I think we'd be a solid team. I'd like to erase this conversation. 
that's not going to happen. I wouldn't like to talk about it again. All right, I get it, but if you change your mind, I'll be sitting right here. Don't I know it. Bill, Ashley, I'd like for you to meet our newest employee, Jake. Jake's going to be helping out around here with copywriting, strategy, market analysis. Please give him a warm welcome and make him feel at home. Go ahead and take a seat, Jake. I'll check in with you later. Thanks, boss. Hey, y'all. How's it going? Hi, Jake. I'm Ashley. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Ashley. Hey, buddy. What's up, Bill? Nice to meet you, Bill. So, expert copywriter, huh? That's what they say. Okay. Well, I got a uh, couple projects cooking right now. Uh, maybe you want to help me out? What do you say? Well, um, Lisa kind of gave me a lot of like first day assignments, so I just was thinking I'd focus on that for now. Ah, that's nonsense. Lisa's technically the manager, but I'm the man that runs the show around here. So, you know, if you want to slide your chair over and help me, I can get you started on a couple tasks. Yeah, sure. Why not? Put your chair over. It's nice to uh, get another man around this, you know? Yeah. Did you uh, catch the game last night? Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, crazy score, huh? Oh, hey, Jake. How's it going? Hey, Ashley. It's, uh, it's going pretty well. I see you've been working with Bill this week. How's that going? You know, I'm doing pretty well. He's, uh, he's a bit of a taskmaster. He's got me doing the copy for the, for the new Genesis campaign, which is, it's kind of a lot because I'm already doing my own campaigns. But, hey, okay, but actually listen to this. I think I got a pretty good tagline for Genesis. What do you think? Genesis, a new beginning. What do you think? Nice, very good, congrats. Um, do be careful though. Why is that? I, I don't understand. Well, you know, working with Bill, it does look like you're kind of doing all the work for him and he is kind of known for taking people's ideas. So just, you know, be careful. Wait, really? That's his reputation? Do you have any evidence? Oh, uh, yeah, not to be a gossip but he literally stole my idea last week and pitched it as his own. Hold on, does Lisa know about this? Lisa knows, she figured it out. Um, he was reprimanded, you know, given a warning, but you seem really nice and really good at what you do, and I just want you to be careful around him. Thank you, thank you, Ashley. Of course, have a good one. Hey team, thanks for coming to this week's progress report meeting. I'd like to get things started, kick it off with the Genesis campaign. Bill, want to start us off? It's going really well. I came up with this new tagline, Genesis, a new beginning. Pretty catchy, right? That is certainly catchy. Is that really your voice, Bill? Did you get any help on this one? Help? No way. None at all. Just me and my big brain behind this one. Really? Well, then. Good job, Bill. Bill, you and I both know that I came up with that tagline. Why didn't you give me any credit just now? Lisa, please <laughs> don't listen to him. Jake, you just started working here, so I'll let that slide. But don't ever make an accusation like that at me again, you hear? Yeah. Look, here's the thing. I'm not gonna have to make any more accusations towards you because I'm never gonna see you again because you're fired. Fired? What? You just started working here, you can't do that. Ah, uh, that's where you're wrong, Bill. My name is Jake Roberts and I'm the founder and CEO of this ad agency. Every year, I dress up disguise as a new employee so I can see how things are working on the ground floor. And from my time with you, I can see that you don't really work at all. You just steal your colleagues' ideas and take advantage of them. So once again, please leave. This company's going down the toilet anyway. I'm gonna make it my life mission to steal all of your business. You'd have to work a lot harder if you wanted to do that, my friend. Now go before I have to call security. Thanks for keeping my cover, Lisa. Anytime, boss. Gotta run, I got a big meeting to go to. Good luck. Ashley, I have a big lunch with a potential investor coming up. You wanna tag along? Sure. I'll meet you in the reception area in 15 minutes. Okay. Thanks again for inviting me again. I know that it's been postponed a bunch. Absolutely. The reason why it's been so hard to get a hold of this investor is because he's worth tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. 
And I know it's been a couple weeks since we first scheduled this, but it's just as important now as ever. With just a little bit of his money, we could expand operations for our company to the East Coast. Oh wow, so this is a big deal. Just a little bit of pressure. Yeah, no worries. I thrive under pressure. Fantastic. All right, well, I see him over there. Let's go. Hello, Rob. How you doing? Pleasure to meet you in person. Very good to meet you as well, Jake. And who is this pretty young thing you've brought with me today? This is uh, a business associate of mine, Ashley. Hi, nice to meet you. The pleasure's all mine. All uh, right, well, let's get seated. I'm starving. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. I know it's been hard to, I know you're a busy man. We might be a small company, but we are doing some big and amazing things. I can't wait to tell you yeah, about it. Yeah, you know, let's save that. Jake, we'll talk about it later, but right now I'm looking a little empty here. Toots, what about you? What are you drinking? Um, I do appreciate it, but it's only one, so I think I'll stick with water. Come on, nonsense. It's five o'clock somewhere, right? And if the three of us are gonna be business partners, I'm gonna need the two of you to loosen up because we're looking a little stiff. So let's level it up, right? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Hi. Hi. Can I get you another Johnny Blue on the rocks? No, actually I'm gonna need three Johnny Blues on the rocks because as you can see now, I have company, right? So, um, and also, please don't walk away so fast next time because I hate to watch you go, but I love to watch you walk away. <laughs> All right, three Johnny Blues on the rocks. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what were we talking about? Well, I was actually getting ready to uh, explain the fundamentals of our business to you. What are we selling? Just with a small investment, we'll be able to expand our operations to the East Coast. Now look, there, there's, a, there's a lot of great... I'm, I'm very sorry, I'm, I'm getting a phone call here. And it's from my son's uh, school. L look, I gotta take this, it'll only be a minute. Ashley, please explain to him the fundamentals of the business. Thing, Jake. I'll, I'll be right back. So what I think Jake was about to get into was really just about yeah, how... You know what, I'm really just sick of this business mumbo jumbo talk, all right? I mean... What I'm actually really curious about is with a body like that, why is there no ring on that finger? <laughs> Don't you think that's fairly inappropriate, especially for a business lunch? Yeah, put yourself in my shoes, right? I'm going, maybe going into business with you. And if that's the case, then, I mean, I'm gonna need to know who I'm gonna be going to bed with, right? Oh, there you are. <laughs> what took you so long? Hey! When I'm talking to you, you listen, okay? Let her go right now. What is wrong with you? I can do whatever I want, when I want, understand? Do you know what I understand? You've been acting like a popish that flaunts his money around to get what he wants from people. One more word out of your mouth and I will crush your business into oblivion, understand? Go ahead, I'd love to see you try. <laughs> hey, what's going on over here? Jake, are you really gonna let this broad talk to me like this? I mean, you need me. Okay, I'm not doing anything until she is fired. I'm not firing anyone today. You've been acting like a toxic ever since we got here. Well, this toxic is worth tens of millions of dollars. And I'm sorry, my friend, but you're not gonna see a cent of that money. And you know what? Drinks are on you. Oh, Jake, thank you for having my back. I'm sorry I cost this to his investment, but he was terrible. I would never want to go into business with a like that. And honestly, the things that I've seen from you today make me think that you'd be a great general manager. What do you think about promotion? I won't let you down. I know you won't. Brucey! <laughs> hey, buddy, my favorite partner. So I'm at this uh, junk spot that you Hi, to check out. And yeah, hold on one sec. Uh, hey there. Welcome to Rodeo Sally's. Yeah, I'm still here. Just, uh, just check his stock. I mean, give me one sec, all right? Hey there. I'm Katrina. I'll be taking care of you today. That's How awesome. I... So if you could just take this pond water out of here and give me some Perrier, I would love that. Oh, well, see, that's just, it's not exactly the type of restaurant. Yeah, and bring me some chilled gazpacho and some trail mix, too. I'm a big M&M guy, so if you could take raisins out, those things are disgusting, like little fingers. If you could take the raisins out, put more M&Ms in, that would be amazing. Well, we'll see you here at Rodeo Sally's. We, um, that's not exactly no, no, no. the- Thanks, you can go. But sir, I'm trying to explain- Don't take all day. I'm on a time crunch. I mean, seriously. And, and also, don't mind if I watch you walk away, little birdie. <laughs> <laughs> the 
it's no big deal. I'll see you. <laughs> oh my god, this is so gross. What is this? Well, hey, Kate. Something the matter? It's nothing, really. Well, you know, you can talk to me about anything. Yeah, it's just this one customer. I, he was asking for stuff that's not on the menu, and he kind of dismissed me when I tried to explain that. He was busy. I'm sure he didn't mean to be so rude. Honestly, the whole interaction just made me feel kind of off. Yeah. Well, what table's he at? One in the back there. Oh, I think I know that man. I had kind of a funny feeling I did too. And who is he? He's a big real estate investor. Terrence Vanderbilt. You heard of him? Did you the post do an article on him? That's the one. Gosh, what is he doing here? I mean, honestly, this place doesn't really seem like his scene. He seems a bit, how do I put this? Posh? Well, listen. I was going to tell you at the staff meeting, but I might as well go ahead and tell you now. I've put Rodeo Sally up for sale, and he's likely going to be the next owner. He's outbid everybody by quite a bit. You're selling Rodeo Sally's? This place was your dream. It, it sure has been, but it's time for me to think about retirement, and I'm really looking forward to the next season of my life. But I can't feel comfortable until I know she's in good hands. <laughs> oh gosh, I can't believe you're uh, leaving us. What are we going to do without our mama bear? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, don't you worry about that. You can't get rid of me that easy. But I have got to do some heavy surveillance on that man to make sure that Rodeo Sally's in the right hands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kate, why don't you take your break now and I'll look after our friend over there. Kind of get a vibe on him. You sure? Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you the tip because I imagine it should be pretty good with the kind of money he's got. <laughs> Gosh, thank you, Greta. Oh. Hi. You're welcome. So, 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 so I sends her off to a, uh, one of those, uh, those silent retreats for 30 days. Yeah, so she can just shut up and stop nagging at me. I mean, seriously, I, I know I'm brilliant, right? <laughs> Howdy. Yeah, give me one second, yeah. So anyway, uh, she's going to be way more concerned about the pH of her kombucha. <laughs> way more than how many Howdy. women are. Yeah. I just want to introduce myself and let you know that I'll be taking over for your meal. So if you need anything, you just let me know. Where's that little, uh, where's that little birdie that was helping me out earlier? Um, the server went on a break, but don't you worry, I'll take good care of you. Mm, if that's so true, then, uh, uh, where's my trail mix? Well, I don't have, I don't see any M&Ms. Well, as your first waitress explained to you, we don't carry those kind of things. Oh my God, there's a gas station right across the street. So why don't you hobble on over there and get me something edible? Well, um, I'd be happy to get you something off our menu. We've got some wonderful munchies. Have you seen the stuffed potato skins? I am telling you, they are to die for. This is ridiculous. I mean, do you know who I am? I can't say that I do, but I can tell you that we are always wanting our guests to have the Best food on this side of the 495. This is food? Yeah, so wh what is going on here? Okay? Uh, it, you can call me Gretel. Oh, okay, uh, Gertrude. So here's the deal. I'm, you know, probably gonna own this place soon. You know, your boss, Mr. Man over here, was pretty thrilled with my opening offer. And uh, when I do take over. Uh, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. Mm, mm, mm. So. Uh, crotchety old ladies like you are definitely not a part of the vision of what I had going on here. Well then, I guess since I won't have a job much longer, I'll head back out to the kitchen and find something scrumptious for you. Giddy on up. Right. Whatever your name is. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't care. We gotta get over here quick, man. Quick. Okay. Look, okay. You know, I was actually thinking of pulling my offer, but, uh, after second thought, we have something here. No, it's a complete dump show. I mean, <laughs> there's absolutely no value in a place like this. It's a dump, okay? It's like a dinky, family, rundown, dumpy diaper bar. Oh God, your moral conscience is suddenly now coming in like you care about these people? Dude, they can get a job at the McDonald's or the Wendy's or the Exxon down the street. Who cares, bro? Look, have Rich draw up the plans for a high-rise luxury hotel. You know what the value is for those things, especially in a town like this. God, I would transform the whole place into a freaking utopia. Have them over to me in two weeks. No, you know what? By the end of this week, okay? I need to get started on this. Right now, let's get the dough rolling. Let's get the ball rolling, man. Peace out, champ. Look here, mister. I overheard what you said on the phone. If you bought Rodeo Sally's, you're gonna tear it down? Is that true? Go to wherever you learn your information, Wikipedia or YouTube, and learn about business before you try to educate yourself on mine. Do you realize this is much more than a restaurant? This is a staple in our community. We've hosted weddings. We've hosted family parties and birthdays from generation after generation. People of this community love this restaurant. You'd be destroying much more than a place to eat. Save it with the sob stories, lady. It's not gonna work on me. Oh, clearly they don't. What's it to you anyway? Dozens of jobs out there for old server ladies like you, unless you're too scared that you can't learn the menu for a new place. You may think you're above us because of your money, mm -hmm. but you will never get your hands on this restaurant. <laughs> Like you even care. What does an old waitress like you have to say about anything referring to real estate or property management? Why do you care? I'm done pretending with you. I am the owner of Rodeo Sally's. And I'm gonna tell you, you will never own this restaurant. Well, <laughs> it would certainly be in your best interest to sell to me, considering I my offer is way higher than any of the other low-ball and craps that you got before. I would sell this restaurant for half of what you're offering me, just to have someone who really understands our community. You would turn down money and continue to be poor just because of your sentimental value in a place like this? I'll have you know, I have quite a nest egg that has been given to me by the people of this community who love this restaurant. And now, I think it's time you get out of here. You're gonna regret this. Oh, I will not regret it. Now you get out of here now. We're not moving on this thing, Bruce. Good morning, Veronica. How are things going today? Fine. It's a day. Let's make it a good one. I have some great news. Uh, what is it? I just got contacted about an extremely high profile case that I think we're going to have a great chance of winning. And if we do win, not only is that going to be amazing for us, it's going to set this law firm up for years and years with steady flow of clients. That sounds like a lot of work. Hey, well, we're not afraid of a little work, are we? Uh, this will be worth it. It's for the tech company, Core. It'll be a great opportunity to see how handling high profile and high stakes case looks like. Uh, it's an essential part of being a great lawyer. Yeah, so Veronica, I actually wanted to talk to you about that. I wanted to ask you about a promotion. It's just I have been working so hard for this company and I need a little bit of extra savings and I don't think I can really wait until I become a great lawyer. Oh, is everything okay? No, it's not really. You see, 
There's these brand new pair of Hermes sandals that just dropped. They are limited edition and I need to snatch them up quick before they fly off the shelves and I just need a little bit of extra finances to get me through. Really, that's all. Oh, I see. So, uh, you want a promotion so you can get a pair of shoes. Yes, but <laughs> I'm sitting in the front. I'm the face of this company. I need to look good. This is for the benefit of the company. Think of it as a whole. I get that. And I really appreciate your enthusiasm, Veronica, but I need you to want to take on more responsibility as a dedication to helping this firm, not for personal expenses. Fine. What can I do to help the case? Well, uh, if you could start by helping me go through this brief, dissecting up the key points, organizing them, and then sending me a summary of it, I would really, really appreciate it. God. How long is this brief? Um, just about 60 pages. Nothing too crazy. 60 pages? Um, hey, big client means a big brief. There is a lot of confidential information in here too, so please, please be careful when you're looking through it and make sure that only your eyes are on this, okay? Yeah, yeah, I'll be careful. I'm serious about this, Veronica, please, I know. In the past, we've had a little trouble keeping track of things and making sure that information stays private, but this time, I really, really need you to be on top of it. Our competitors cannot, under any circumstance, get a hold of this information, all right? Not only would it be devastating to us, but it would ruin CORE as well. Okay, I said I'd be careful, all right? All right, I'm going to leave this here with you, and then I'm going to send you the PDF to the brief in a moment, okay? Thanks. Hello, this is the desk of Julia Ratton, her secretary Veronica speaking. How can I direct your call? Hi, Veronica. My name is Simon Bell. You're actually the exact person I wanted to talk to. I am? Who is this and why are you asking? Listen, Veronica, has your firm picked up a client by any chance lately called Core? Maybe. Who's asking? Well, I'm the CEO of UNITSO, CORE's primary competitor, and I'm very much interested in discussing the CORE case with you if you have a minute to spare. Oh, yeah? Listen, Simon, if that is your real name, this information is very confidential, and I don't feel like risking my job for some person who I don't even know is real. So you have a very lovely day, and don't call this number again. Wait, 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 wait. We'll pay you for the brief on court. You have my attention. How much are we talking? Why are you laughing? This is serious. Why are you so serious? Listen, unless Superman himself with X-ray vision comes in here, there's nobody can see through that folder, so you're okay. Look, if anyone catches me doing this, I am I am not only going to lose this job, but I am never going to be allowed to work in another law office in this entire country ever again, and I'll never be able to become a lawyer. If you want to be a lawyer so bad, then why are you doing that? Get off your high horse. You're the one who's bribing me. Listen, I'm just a businessman. That's what we do, all right? We set advantages, we make plays, we play chess. All right, well, can you, like, set up these advantages a little bit faster? Yeah, yeah. Everything in there? Yeah, everything's in there. I printed it all out, so there's no digital footprint left out there. Oh, smart, smart. Look at you. Good doing. Ooh, not so fast. What's wrong? You said to hurry up. Yeah, hurry up on paying me. Where's my money? All right, all right. Uh, what do you want, a check? Ew, what? No, nobody does checks anymore. Just Venmo me. All right, whatever. Makes things easier for you. There you go. All right. <laughs> Woo! Quickest 10K of my life. Thank you. 
Nice doing business with you. Take care. See you around. <laughs> Hermes sandals, here I come. Hey, Julia, I know you called me into your office. I'm guessing this has to do with the brief being a little bit late, but I really promise I'm gonna get it to you. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't realize you had company. I don't believe we've met before, sir. My name is Veronica. Uh, Save it, Veronica. Simon has already told me everything. Who? This man? I've literally never seen this man a day in my life. Okay, drop the act. Please. Look, Julia, I don't know what Simon has told you, but it is a complete lie. I promise. I don't know, Veronica. It sounded pretty convincing to me. Okay. He tried to bribe me for some information, but I rejected it. And now he's all mad and making up some kind of narrative to disrupt the beautiful harmony that we have created in this office out of some kind of spite. Oh yeah? Then, how do I have this? I don't know. Maybe you printed it from my computer? Maybe you hacked in there? How am I supposed to know? It doesn't matter. We can go through my email history and you will see there's nothing there, Julia. Just stop. Veronica, you're really embarrassing yourself right now. I know who Simon really is and it's not who you think. What? What do you mean? What are you talking about? I'm not the CEO of UNITSO. I'm the CEO of this law firm. What? After some information went missing on our last case, I started to grow a little suspicious of you. I thought that you were selling information to our competitors. Now, we put you to the test, and you failed. You really betrayed our trust, Veronica. You can't prove any of this. Actually, we can. See, do you remember that Venmo from earlier? That left a digital footprint, all the proof we need. Now, Veronica, you have to take responsibility for your actions. You're fired. This is insane. I just, I just wanted like a little bit more cash because you guys barely pay me anything. Defaulting to gaslighting, it's a shame. You would have made a great lawyer, but now I am going to tell everyone what you did and you will never work in this industry again. I am the best secretary that you have ever had. Good luck finding a new secretary to do all of your dirty work for barely any money. Yeah, I think we'll survive. So I'm gonna need you to go pack up your office, clean everything out, and make your way away from my firm. But thank you for your business. You will regret this. You're gonna want me back so quick. That's insane. She actually handled that way worse than I thought she would have. Yeah. Well. I'm gonna have to hire you a new secretary. Thanks, boss. I gotta get back to work. Thank you.